So welcome to today's webinar. Um, I know we have this scheduled for one hour, but we really shouldn't take up that much, much time. Um, the purpose is to inform you all of your next steps as a successful Trade Scheme beneficiary and to ensure that you receive your grant allocations as you should do. Um, firstly, just introducing myself, um, I'm Kira McCoy. I am the Marketing and Communications um, Lead on the Turing Scheme. And I'm joined today by my colleague Emma Sullivan from the Grant Operations team, who will um, take you through the, the information for today. So firstly, congratulations on your successful outcome as part of the Turing Scheme. And we really look forward to working with you throughout this year, particularly to see how you use your grant allocations and, and how that's impacting on your students. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to Emma now, um, who will start the, the webinar. Any questions, um, we'll pick up at the end. If you could just put those in chat, please. Um, that would be great. Um, so Emma, I've passed over to you. Thank you. Um, great, great. Who loves to see a giant picture of themselves? Um, anyway, uh, I'm, um, oh, can you not hear? Yes. Can everybody else hear me? Got some great, like the thumbs up. Thank you. Not sure. Maybe, maybe try joining and and uh, coming out and going back in again. Okay. So, uh, as Kira said, uh, congratulations. Well done on receiving your Turing 2023 grant. I'm the senior grant manager for the Turing scheme. Um, so by now you should have had your grant agreement, your outcome um, and the checklist. What basically I'm going to go through here is the checklist and just clarify any points. Um, I'm just going to switch my camera off so that um, I don't get any uh, feedback from myself. OK, if we could go on to the next slide. OK, so you should have received this. This is what it looks like. This is just to remind you that this checklist is here. Um, and I'm just going to go through again. So please pop through to the next slide. OK, so just to say failure to adhere to this may result in funding being withheld. So this means if you don't sign your grant, I will get to that. Yes, if you if you don't sign your grant agreement, um, we, we will withhold funding. So you must sign and return the grant funding agreement via DocuSign within 28 days. So the grant agreement must be signed by your legal rep or somebody who has authority to sign on behalf of your organisation. If it's not the name legal rep, we will then probably ask for a letter from your HR department or from the legal rep themselves, confirming that the person signing the grant agreement does have the authority to sign on, path, on behalf of your organisation. Um, you must also complete and sign the Annex 8. So that's also that's uh, the legal representative or somebody who has legal authority to sign the uh, the, the Annex 8. Um, if you do not need to complete this, so many HEs do not have um, vulnerable adults or children, we just need to have that email again. Even if you sent us an email last year, we need to have an email again confirming that um, we, you do not need to sign the Annex 8. And the other important detail is the bank details. So yes, you may have given us your bank details last year, but again, we need those bank details again. So uh, they must be uploaded into the system uh, along with all the supporting evidence. Please do not email the evidence in or the bank details. We need them in the system to be able to make those payments. Go to the next slide. OK, so things that you must do in the next ooh, few weeks, few days is um, other than obviously sign your grant agreement uh, is uh, make those first very important payment requests. So you may have noticed that some of you have had a reduced budget. There is um, uh, a reduced budgets all around this year, really. So you may need to make some changes to your project. So that requires a change request in the system. So um, you may need to uh, reduce the number of groups that you've got going so that you can alter the numbers of participants. Uh, you may need to reduce the duration that you're going again to utilise the budget to the best of your ability. So as long as the aims and objectives of your project remain the same, you have the um, flexibility there to change your, your, your uh, groups and um, participant numbers 
in the project. So get that change request in so that you can get that um, payment request in the system. So all funds must be requested through the system. Uh, so that's mobility uh, payments and the organisational support payments. So you have to request that through the system. Uh, you must submit the payment request no later than the deadline. So the deadlines, uh, we'll go through deadlines on the next slide because that's quite important. And it's important to keep your project up to date. So you must submit those monthly reports and you must uh, make those changes. So if you changed the start date, you need to let us know in the system. If you've changed the location of where you're going, you must again um, let us know in the system. And then once all your mobilities are completed, so that final person's come back from, from your mobility, uh, you must final report within 28 days. OK, so this is this is super important. So these are the upcoming payment request deadlines. So the first few months are different as we request these money, uh, this money in order to get into the flow of things. So for that first anticipated point of expenditure of uh, August, we need that payment request to be submitted by the end of July. For September and October, we need those payment requests in the system by the 31st of August. So if you do have two of those, you need to get your September one in slightly earlier so that you can get that October one in as well. And then we go into the natural flow of things. So for a point of expenditure in November, we have a payment request deadline of the 15th of September. So the reason that there is a difference here is because we have to also request the money from the Department for Education. So for the first few months, we request that money based on what's in your project, what you've been awarded. But then as we go through the natural progression of the of the program, we have to request that money based on um, the participant information and your payment requests. So we don't hold that money. We have to request it, which is why there's this lead in time. So those deadlines there are really important. Um, it's in the handbook. Um, take a note of it and remember to get those payment requests in. And if you have any changes to be made before your payment request, get that in at the very beginning of the month so that we can process that within the, the five day turnaround. So there's a five day turnaround for a change request. However, there isn't that um, service level agreement on the payment request as we have to validate that data and there may be a little bit of back and forth with us. OK, so next slide please okay um as i said please please do familiar yourself with your points of expenditure so these are linked to the start dates in your application so you may have said in your application that you had a um, point of expenditure at one two or three months ahead of the start date of your mobility so that involves you knowing the um, participant names etc almost if you had a three month um, point of expenditure, almost five months before those mobility goes, those um, participants go on their mobility. So if you do need to make any changes to that, please go in again, go, go into the system, make a change request. If you create a new mobility group, you can change that um, uh, point of expenditure. So if you're not quite sure yet who's going and you thought maybe you're a bit enthusiastic thinking you might know who they were three months before, just go in and change that uh, mobility group to maybe a one month uh, point of expenditure, just to give yourself that bit of a buffer to gather those participant names. Um, so yeah, again, we keep saying keep, uh, you must keep your project up to date. So you must make those changes. So if um, you had a, a mobility group, you thought it was going to go in September, something's happened, it's now not going to go until March. You need to go into the system and change that in the system so that you can keep your um, project up to date. Part of the uh, ticking of making a payment request uh, confirms that the rest of your project is up to date. So you must you must keep that up to date. And those monthly reports have to be submitted monthly. So even if you're you know you've got a project that um, doesn't go anywhere until May next year, we have to have 
monthly report form you've submitted. Just just let us know how it's going. How's the planning going? Um, is everything still on track? It doesn't need to be war and peace, but it does need to kind of keep us informed that um, everything's still going ahead, basically. And you can use that to also, you know, maybe ask us any any queries that um, don't need to be answered straight away. Otherwise, there is always um, just and the next slide. I'm going to bang on about this. If you've got any changes, let us know about the changes. It's important that you do this. So um, just some little hints and tips. Um, I know when you uh, when the contact person set up the application, you had to use that email address. Um, you could now consider maybe changing that to a shared email address if you're worried that you might miss any uh, communication that we send out via the system. Um, I know those uh, monthly reporting reminders, payment request reminders go out to that email address. So if you um, complete an annex and seven, you could uh, maybe update that to a shared email address. Um, keep keep everything um, as your grant agreement says, you need to keep all information, receipts, et cetera, for um, a period of seven years after um, of your contract. And again, there's uh, the handbook, there's some great videos online on how to make a payment request, how to make a change request, and uh, the um, the handbook is there with step by step guidance. Um, it really is short and sweet, but I know there's a lot of questions, so I think uh, Kira, if you can go through some of the questions and let's see how we go. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'll go to the start of the questions. If that's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, there's one. Can you confirm who the grant agreement would be sent to in the institution? We haven't received ours. Um, so you... that will be the person. Sorry, am I talking to you? That's that okay. made the application. Would that be correct? Yeah, that should go to the person who um, is the contact person named in the application. Um, I, I see there's quite a lot of questions that uh, people saying they haven't received the grant agreement yet. We'll, we'll go through this and just double check on that because that should have come through now. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, the slides will be provided and we will be sharing the recording in the next few days as well. Um, again, a couple about haven't received a grant agreement so we'll take those offline and check those Emma between us we'll get those. yeah of course um and yes we can resend the checklist as well just moving through these okay quite a lot on the grant the grant agreements <laughs> yeah, yeah um the agreement says Emma we have to have a risk assessment agreed but we can't do this until we are further down the line oh. is that correct that's part of the Annex 8. So um, it says that you should have it in place by the time that the mobility happens. So as long as you're signing that you will have that in place by the time the mobility happens, that's fine. OK, um, how can we make an appeal? Um, yeah. So oh, go on, sorry. I was just saying the appeals process is available on the Train Scheme website in the contact us section. Um, but Emma, if you want to give more details on that, it's fine. No, I was going to say that literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, we, we put a link to to that information in the, the chat following this as well. Um, how to do a change request. We have a video on that as well. And there should be information on my right in the handbook on that too. Um, so again, we'll put a link to that video in this chat following the webinar. Yeah, of course. Um, can the funding be used across mobilities if requested more than one initially? Can the funding be used across more than one? I'm not sure if I know what that means, I'm afraid. This from I'm, Tony, yeah. do you want to? Oh, hi, yes, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was um, obviously we helped a consortium bid that um, ended up with only, you know, they, they applied for 30 students for, for four trips, ended up with nine students and one teacher, which makes it unviable. You can't have one teacher on a trip with a, with a group of students, especially if five of them are SEND. So is it possible to use the funding that's been allocated to combine them into one mobility or to have to have to be only for that trip? 
hundred percent. Um, so uh, everybody is probably quite a lot of the schools will be in this situation this year as the budgets have had to be reduced. Um, so yes, combine those mobilities. So if you had five groups um, originally with maybe twenty students and you've ended up with five groups with uh, less than that and no um, accompanying people, please merge those groups maybe into one trip or two trips so that you can increase the number of accompanying people. Wonderful. But how do we do that? Is that through the reporting in a, tool? In a change request, yeah. Change yes. request, thank you. That's okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can we make changes to the project after we have signed the grant agreement? Um, we only need time to work out how to make the changes in light of reduced budget. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's fine. You can make changes throughout the project life cycle as well. So there isn't, um, you know, as things you know, progress and you uh, work out because there's, there's a small period of time to work out exactly what you need to do. So if you need to make those small changes at the beginning just to get going in the in the first few months, you can do that and work out how you need to plan your budget later on. That's fine. Um, can we claim admin costs for preparation of the grant application? No. But there is, no. if you have been awarded, there's organisational support that could go towards that. OK, so we have... Um, a message to, um, someone who's advising the, the grant agreement and checklist went to the legal representative and not the person who actually made the bid. So Emma, we'll have to check that with the, the team that sent those out, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and some received it as a PowerPoint file and not a PDF. Okay. Um, how do you change the month of anticipated expenditure? So in order to, so that is linked to your application. So in order to actually change the um, month linked to your point of expenditure, you will have to uh, create a new mobility group. So you'll have to delete the original mobility group and then create a new mobility group with a different point of expenditure. Okay. Um, how long before the deadline can we request the payment? Um, I wouldn't do it too far in advance of the deadline if I were you um, as a having an a, uh, open payment request means that you can't actually continue with any change requests until we've approved that. And we can't start approving those ones until just after the um, after the deadline uh, of the 15th when we go into that cycle. OK. Um, next question, is the handbook available yet? Yep, the handbook is available. It is on the Trades Game website. Again, I'll put a link into this chat following it um, so everyone has that. Um, can we get further information about the monthly report? What do you need to know and how is it used? Um, we have to make changes yep. via the portal, so what information should we provide? OK, so not everybody is making changes via the portal, so you might have a... Um... You, you might not need to make any changes. So it's really just letting us know that you're still on track, that you're still you know, partaking in the programme, you're still, um, it, the mobility is still going to go ahead. So it, it's really us to be able to have that confirmation that you're still part and parcel of the programme. Okay, um, for the August, September and October POE, a payment request, can we submit a blank participant sheet as we did in previous years, as we don't have all participant details as yet? No, we will need all your participant data to make that payment request. Um, where do we submit the monthly reports? Through the system. There will be guidance in the handbook on how to do that. Okay, uh, next one. Can you clarify about the monthly reports um, are they supposed to include students who are due to depart months in advance? The monthly reports, no, you don't need to include information about student data in the monthly reports. It's more um, a narrative on how project planning is going. Okay. Um, are payment requests always for upcoming expenditure or can it be in retrospect? No, you need to make the, the payment request at the point of need, which is in advance of the mobility happening. So we, we must adhere to those deadlines. 
Um, we have a message from a beneficiary who is new to the process um, cool. and feels there's a lot of assumed knowledge about the portals, the forms, the processes that they're unaware of and what support we can provide on those. Um, so we do have videos on each of the um, processes like change requests, make a payment request, etc. Um, all on our YouTube channel and linked on our website and it takes you through step by step guidance. Um, the handbook will become like your, your Bible as such or you refer to that takes you through everything you need to know. Um, and also we will be creating more content as the year goes along to, to support that. Um, and there's also the um, if, if you can't find your answers in any of those resources, there is the contact centre, which you can contact via email for any advice. Emma, anything you'd like to add there? Is that OK? OK. Um. And all information about the appeal against the funding allocation. Um, again, there is an appeals, um, appeals process on the web, train scheme website. Um, and that fund will need to speak to DFE about the funding allocation. Um, the, the allocation is a policy decision, um, not the delivery partner. Um, is the portal going to be less rigid this year? Um, such as can we submit a change request alongside a payment request? Um, so there's been very minor changes to the system um, from last year. No, so the system is is the same as it same. was last year. So this is why it's important to ad adhere to those deadlines so that you don't end up in a backlog, backlog situation where you're trying to make too many payment requests and change requests at the same time. So really, we're starting in the system this year as we mean to go on, make those payment requests um, at those points of need. This question is about what information is needed other than the date point of expenditure for the mobility groups and number of students. Is it necessary to have all student details at this point? So is that, sorry, what was the question again? Sorry. Um, is it necessary to have all student details at this point? If you're making a payment request, for that point of expenditure, but you don't need to have all the student data for the, the rest of the year. OK, uh, next one is. Um, I first you read in the program guide that funding will be released until until the T2 project is completed and final report submitted and funds agreed. Um, can you confirm when we expect the first payment? This will be key to support students heading on their year abroad from the 1st of September. I'm not sure that's the case. Um, we will be making payment payments at point of need for the Turing 3. I think the question, sorry, was about the fact that you're saying you have to have done your final report if you've got the funding again this year before you can claim down the funding for this year's if you haven't submitted your report from last year. I don't think the timing works for that. Um, <laughs> um, we just had a, a, a you know a, a mobility return yesterday, so they haven't had time to file their final report, but obviously want to start uh, start setting up the portal for next year. But it seems that you can't do that until you've submitted your final report from this year. I don't, I don't think that's the case, as far as oh. I'm aware, because we'll have people coming back on the 31st of August. Mm. That's so what it's, it does state that, that. That's what it states in the programme guide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll have to take that away. I'm sorry about that. Please check that. Yeah, of course. Mm. <clears throat> OK, thank you. OK, um, another question around payments. Um, as someone fell in T2, it took quite a long time before they received the funding. But is there a plan to make this quicker, such as can we request payments six months out rather than three? Mm, 
No, we can't. So the, the, the points of expenditure are one, two and three months in advance. So if you're three months in, in advance, that's in effect almost five months because you'll be making that payment request um, before the point of expenditure. Uh, that's the, the greatest time frame that we can do. Well, the, point, the point for that one was because some flights, if we don't, you need to book them six months in advance, because if you wait till the three months or five months when you get them, the funding, um, the, 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 the good flights will have gone and the prices will have gone. I'm afraid I, I, I can't change the programme rules for that one, I'm afraid, sorry. So are you suggest those schools will have to subsidise it until they get the funding down, is that the best way? As, as, as far as I can work out, yes. Thank you. Um, it's probably if if an organisation wants to book flights before the summer, can they request, request that money in August so that we pay the money initially in July and then that is reimbursed? I think that's a similar question. Similar have, question have, as long everything as everything needs to go through the system and um, as we need to have a record. So can I just clarify that? Does that mean that um, obviously if we book those flights as a school now so that we can get those set prices and then we put the the payment request in at the end of this month and then that'll just be obviously paid back to the school. Yeah, so obviously it'll be based on um, the grant rates as well. So yeah. Um, this question around, um, is it their understanding that Annex 8, Annex 8 first needs to be signed via DocuSign? That will generate the release of the grant grant agreement. No, they're, they're two separate documents. They're not linked together. I think if there's a, quite a few queries here about the not received the grant funding agreement, I wonder um, we will take this away and look into it because I know yeah. we've sent them out. So, and we've received them back as well. Yeah, and a few comments around so we'll, the we will um, look into that. The underutilized funds from T2, which we will we will take yeah, yeah. offline as well and get clarification on that. If we were just funding, is there still a requirement to go for two weeks or is there flexibility to go for a few days less? Depends on your sector, is that correct, Emma? Yeah, so the minimum duration must be adhered to. Um so again, if your budget's been reduced. Um, you'll need to either reduce participant numbers so that you can adhere to that minimum duration. There's details on the minimum duration in the programme guide as well, if anybody just needs to double check those. Yeah. Um, can you confirm when the embargo is due to be lifted? Um, we will let you know. We will embargo. let you know as soon as we know. <laughs> yeah. um, we're waiting on that confirmation from the Department for Education at the moment. Um, I think that question on the, the the reducing the time frames or the numbers means that the, the funding allocated is it per person or the per funding? So could could that funding for say eight days be used that the full amount still be used for say six days? No, funding funding is based on uh, duration, so it's all it's all within the system. So the grant rate is the grant rate for that duration. So so reducing the days, you still you still you're reducing the amount you can claim still because it's per day. You could yeah, you're reducing the days, but you could add an extra person as long as the oh, minimum. So, so you can move it between the so you can move it between. Yes. Okay, so numbers of people can change, but the days can't. Um, you could change the days as long as it meets the minimum duration, uh, for a mobility period. So, 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 so an eight day See, funding could cover six days. So that gives a bit more yes, funding for the. Yes, for each yes, month. yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's different durations for different sectors. So you have to kind of look at which. Um, oh, sorry. Which, yes, I was talking about schools. That's OK. Sorry. I just. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just um, uh, double check then if we change the date of travel mm -hmm. so that we can kind of put back our point of expenditure, would that still be OK? We'd originally said that we would travel in March, but if we travel in June, would that still be OK for the application, as long as we make those changes on the on the system? Yes, that's 100 percent fine. Thank you. 
Okay. In the annexe template, um, there's a mandatory option for tick yes or no, but also to add a comment, um, which there's not a lot of space on. What is expected to be included in the comments section? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if I've had that question before, I'm afraid. Sorry. Yeah. We'll check that one out. Yeah. Um, can the funding be used for pre visits? It asks if one has been undertaken in Annex 8. That's in regard to. Any any participants with additional needs, Emma? Is that correct? That there's pre visits. Uh, they can be yes. for. So you'd you'd have to um, inform us about that. Uh, but pre visits can be made. There's a the I think it's a three day minimum uh, maximum duration for a pre visit. Okay. Um, do we need to commit a change request if we agree with the reduced numbers and allocation? If you agree with it, you don't need and you don't want to make any changes. Leave it as it is. Um, do all children who strictly have to do all children who attend strictly have to be disadvantaged? Some disadvantages are vague. No, they don't. They don't all have to be disadvantaged. I think that question is again when you've given a percentage of there has to be so many disadvantaged, so many SEND has been allocated funding. Can you change those percentages? So if, if less SEND went or you had less disadvantage, does that affect the funding? It's a, it's a good question. Um, so it would affect the fun funding. Um, we've uh, purposefully uh, tried to keep the numbers of disadvantaged and send as high as they are. So um, allocation should be aimed towards those more so in the first instance. Um, but there is a, a flexibility. Again, you'd have to put in a change request to do that. So we'd have to agree that. So it's possible to bring less advantage, but it has to be through a change request that we would have to yeah, sign off on. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just reading this. Um, the question in terms of the the percentage received, irrespective of the quality of the application, to for. Um, Again, we the, but yeah, we we the how the funding has been allocated is a DFE policy led result. Um not aware of, of how they made that decision, but um when once the embargoes that now comes up announced, we we may know more of that detail. Hands up, should we go with Yeah, let's happens? go with a few hands up. Um so we have uh Amory O'Neill. Hi, yeah, it's Marianne. Uh, Marianne thank sorry. you. That's okay, no problem. Um, I just wanted to go back to uh, you mentioned about the embargo being in place, and I raised the question about whether we could um, upload a blank participant sheet last year because the August point of expenditure um, actually covered August, September, and October. Actually, we we applied for that in in August, and we were told that we could just upload a blank participant sheet because it was acknowledged that we wouldn't have all of the participant information at that point. I'm just a bit concerned. You're saying that the embargo has not yet been lifted. We can't tell our students that we have the funding, therefore they can't apply for it. Therefore, we don't know who the students are, so we can't complete the participant sheet. If we're expected to submit the payment request by the end of this month bearing in mind it's also periods of annual leave it's it's quite difficult um i'm just wondering why why that decision has been taken that we can't upload a blank one for those first two or three months and is there any flexibility there so last year that was more down to uh system uh so we the we the system was still in design and hadn't been 100% finalised by that point. So we had to do all those um, payments offline um, at that point. So now that we have the system in place, we're adhering to uh, 
program rules and program rules state that we must have participant data to make a payment request. Could that have, not have be you... communicated though at the point of when we submitted our application so that we were aware that that was a, an issue? Because it's incredibly difficult for us to plan um, you know, ahead for our students when we were only notified at the end of, I know it was, it was a little bit earlier this year, but it's still the end of June that we were told we've been, whether or not we've been successful. And we're still, you know, not able to to fully, and we've got less than half of what we asked for. Now we're having to manage how we're going to allocate that funding. We're going to have to make significant changes, we think, to our project plan. And all this is not helpful. And if we can't then submit, if I know that we can submit a payment request later in the programme life cycle to cover what we've done, but you, what you're saying is we can't do that. So we, does that mean we won't get funding? I mean, it, it's all uh, good points that I'll have to take away. I don't know the answers to this um, off off the back of that, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, we'll I, I really would yeah. appreciate yeah, no, if you could look into it yeah. because I'm really concerned that we're not going to be able to to meet that deadline and provide that information for you. And then I'd, I don't want us to miss out <laughs> on any yeah, funding I, or, or we may have to just, you know, pull out altogether. Um, and we'll also check the rules around the embargo because that is externally with media. Mm. Um, it, it shouldn't hinder you having to do your internal processes in order to get your funding on time. Um, so we'll check that bit and come back to you as well. Thank you. Do you, um, do you know if that process of uploading and downloading students' names has been improved? Because you have to upload it, download it, change it, upload it again for the the, the name lists, um, which would takes a lot of time and can cause issues. And again, with, with the student names, with all the details, could they just put any names to begin with and then change them in the future, change the participants' names? Um no <laughs> you know um that's um no no we, we, we need real names of people going um for, but if students drop out or change or can't go for any reason are you allowed to change the names of course yeah i mean if a student drops out but if we saw that 100 percent of the students dropped out we would probably come back to you and question what was happening is the process still download and re-upload again it, it is yeah the process hasn't changed oh. Okay. And the next person with their hand up is Mrs. G. Parkinson. Hi, sorry. Could you tell me, is there any other, would we be able to find out if there's any other local schools to us that have also been accepted and, and had their application approved so that we can kind of, because this is the first time we'll have done it in our school and it would be nice to work with another another school locally and, and kind of make sure we're, we're going along the same process and, and doing the right things. Um, so I mean that's a, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. We suppose we can't release individual. Um, oh, no, but I guess. So, the, but if you want to open up the conversation as call where you're located, someone may be able to. So we're in Stoke on Trent. I know previously um, a secondary school near to ourselves was ex was accepted. Um, I think they were last year. So their leaders offered to come and give us a bit of support, but it would be nice if if there was another school locally that, that we could work with. Okay, and I see a few putting their, their locations into the chat. Um, so if anyone would like to share that, that'd be great. Um, sorry, this chat's going. Um, next person with a hand up, Lucy Gager. Hi, thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanted to check, is this, um, this webinar is for both schools and FE and HE, is that right? Yes, yeah, so we're all centered. Okay, yeah. cool, just checking. Um, you mentioned in passing, Emma, about um, the reduction in um, in grant amount and how everyone's got a reduction in their grant amount and how um, that might impact our mobilities, including reducing group duration as well as reducing numbers going on the mobility. But I did just want to check how that works with the restriction of not part funding students. So for example, if so we're a university, if our students were going on a year abroad that was nine months long, it's our understanding that we can't reduce that funding and only give them the funding for six months if they're going for nine months. Can I just no, you're a hundred percent, yeah. So so okay. unfortunately I was kind of talking to schools there where they've had like right. um 
accompanying people and uh, participants uh, reduced. So talking about the flip, where um, the flexibility for doing that is kind of a bit new to schools sector right, okay. as a whole. Um, sure. Whereas, yeah, in HE, your your the full amount needs to be funded. Okay, and, and I'm so sorry just to jump in um, okay. while I'm speaking, but I thought it'd be worthwhile. Um, when you're asking the DfE about the embargo and communication with students, our process had been to um, put all that information on our website. So we've got a draft website that's just ready to go as soon as the embargo is lifted. We've got that very tight time frame of having to request a um, payment to the end of July. Our students are now on their long vacation break. You know, they, they've kind of finished for the summer. They may be traveling. Um, when you ask the DfE about the embargo and kind of whether or not we can communicate with our students, would you be able to check with them if that includes web pages? Like, I understand that we can't tell the media, but like in order to get the information from our students, we were trying to do it over a website, which I think a lot of other universities will probably operate with as well. Yeah, absolutely. I completely understand. That, that situation so we will ask DFE for a response. That's great thank um, you so much. On that. Yeah. Um, next question personal hand up is Joanna Perskelly. Uh, hi I'm Joanna Perskelly this is from the University of Portsmouth. Uh, I as Lucy mentioned this webinar is for both uh, schools and universities. So uh, there are a lot of questions that are not applicable to the universities. However, I wanted to point out uh, because in the email that we received with the results, uh, there is a note saying that if the grant funding agreement is not signed, not payments will be made to the projects. Only projects with signed agreements will receive funding. So if you previously received the Turing scheme funding, that project needs to be completed before we receive the 2324 uh, funding. So can you please confirm to us that this refers to Turing 1 rather than Turing 2 project? Because during the application uh, process, it was noted that we will receive the 2324 funding uh, only when the Turing 1 project is fully finalized. But the note in the email with the results that we received says something completely different. So can you please finalize, uh, can you please clarify that we can actually apply for 23-24 funding with our current Turing 2 project being still under reconciliation from our auditors, etc. and before we finalize? Yeah, I, I think somebody asked a similar question earlier, and I will, I will have to clarify that for you. Um, I would assume it's referring to Turing 1 rather than Turing 2, as Turing 2 is still in process. Um, there are people still out there on mobility. So, uh, but we will clarify that for you, that note in that email. Thank you. It's OK. OK, Sharon Jones. and um, for the advice. Um, I'm based in Northern Ireland where school holidays are already underway. I'm in a university context, but three key oh, members of staff and a very small team are on leave until 17th of July, including the admin leave who normally completes some monthly reports. And we've had um, a notice that the June report is, is outstanding. Um, I've returned from leave to attend this webinar. Can we have flexibility around the, the June report um until the end of July. So are you are you referring to Turing 2? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um if any Turing 2 queries like that, if you're able just to email in so that we can just um concentrate on on the start of Turing 3. But feel yeah, free but to I, email I, in. I, I certainly will, but the reason why I'm asking this is because I note that we can't really start the processes for Turing 3, for which we have been allocated funding until all those monthly reports and so on are, are are complete. Again, I'm going to have to look into that. That's um, I'm I'm not sure about that. Right. And what is who, who's what? What is the best email address? Because the I think the email that it came the notice came in on this morning um, was one. So that of those, would come from the system. Yeah, it was the system. So who who would be best to contact about that by email? Just email in the the Turing dot scheme. 
email address. Join team. That's lovely. Thank yeah. you so much. That's okay. Um, we have Sean, uh, Shan, Angel. Hi, are you all right? Um, ho hopefully a couple of quick ones, if that's okay. It's our first time. Yep. Um, I was reading through the through the document. So uh, the organisational support, one of the things it says is ensuring efficient mentoring and supervision arrangements for the participants. Does that mean we can use that part of our funding for staff travel and staff accommodation? As opposed to taking it out of the transport costs? Good question. Um, I may have to come back to you on that. Okay. I, only because when I when I look at this as a as a as a new new bod to this, mm. the organisational uh, amount is is quite a lot compared to the the travel cost. So there's a little bit of me thinking, well, what else am I going to spend that money on? I'm sure everyone else is here thinking I got 101 things I I'd spend <laughs> that on usually, but for us it's like we because the travel cost wouldn't cover the cost of staff being able to attend, or it doesn't actually meet all of the students. Um, flight costs as well um, I, and I know Lucy asked that question a minute ago of can we top up slightly part of their funding and you said that now schools do have a bit of flex flexibility to do that is that right? So uh, the, the the funding allocation is tied to the number of students so the the number of students and the duration mean that uh, is tied to the the uh, allocation that you're given so um, you couldn't you couldn't take less students and still utilize all the funding because it the, the amount is tied to that participant um about the organization support <coughs> on that one oh, just sorry i someone coughed <laughs> Do you yes. say you the, the organizational support i'll have to get back to you about the whether that is something that could be utilized for from os Okay, uh, and then I guess that will, would answer my other question, which is about can you split the funding between the allocated categories if some are short and some are in surplus? So Annex 11 of your grant agreement does tell you uh, what you can and can't do with budget environment. So there's an element of uh, varying between the categories uh, that you can do without telling us about, as in you have to tell us, but we don't have to approve it. Mm -hmm. um and then there's as soon as you start going over 10 percent, we kind of have to start approving that but there is the flexibility between that so yeah Brilliant. thank you very much appreciate that it's okay um i see there's still a lot of questions coming through and we are coming towards um a, a fuller i was just wondering if um emma we could take some of these questions offline and come back to everyone along with the additional guidance which is already available yeah, I think which may answer some of your questions, some of the links. Um, I think we really do need to look into that grant, the grant agreement. Um, we'll come back to everyone on that as well. But if there's any particular type of communications which would be more help, most helpful, please please let us know, um, and we'll do our best to to get those across. Are you able to share uh, obviously the, the all the, the answers to all the questions that you're going to take offline with everybody? Or we we like I say well, I presume we'll get the recording of this and some of the answers we can hear ourselves. But um, there's lots of questions that you haven't been clear on or answered. Where where can we find the answers to all those? Yeah, we will we will have an FAQ document which we do uh, uh, after almost webinars. Um, and apologies for any questions which we haven't been able to answer today or unclear on. There is a few clarifications we need to go offline and check on. And will that be emailed out or do we find it somewhere online? Yes, we will email that out. Thank you. OK. Um, thank you very much for your time. I say if you we will um, check out the, the priority around the grant agreement and the embargo. Um, I think that's the two main questions at the moment um, and when you can start your promotion internally. Um, and we will work on creating an FAQ document as well as all the questions and share any guidance and recording with you. Uh, yeah. So thank you all for your, your time today. Yeah, thank you for your time today. And thank you. again, congratulations. All right, thanks thank all. Okay, thank you everyone.